Hi, I'm G. Welcome back to my art channel. And for this video, I thought I'd have a second go with the Arteza watercolors, and I'd have a go at painting this, this autumn leaf, this yellow, green, and brown autumn oak leaf. <laughs> So I decided to use six colours for this leaf, two yellows, two greens and two sort of dark colours as well to give me better shadows. And I'm using the Arteza paper instead of a regular watercolour paper, which you can see has got a bit more of a regular kind of texture to it. And I start out with Gamboge, which is a lovely sounding colour and it's a sort of yellow with a bit of orange going to it. And as you can see, I'm not penciling this out first, I'm using the paint to draw with and trying to draw the shape of the leaf as I go along with lots of nice wet gamboge and as you can see I realize I'm a bit close to the edge of my frame so I get a rub out quick and I have to rub out that frame make a little minor adjustment and then I can redraw the rest of the leaf and now I've got the shape of the leaf painted on I can go in while it's still wet and I can start dropping little bits of my slightly darker yellow the saffron orange color in on all of the areas of the leaf where I think I'm going to do some shadow when I do my later layers so as you can see me start in the second layer, I'm really starting to put in some of those areas of shadow with a lot more definition. I'm not going too dark yet because I know I can put on a layer three and a four if I need them. So you can see me mixing in uh, burnt sienna, my brown color, with my yellows to get a slightly darker sort of yellowy brown. But also as I'm sweeping around and doing some of those areas brown, I'm thinking the top of this leaf has got a lot of green in it. So you'll see me here drop in some lovely blobs of the sap green as well while it's still wet so the colors are still running together and now as I move towards the bottom of the leaf you can see it's much more brown at the base of the leaf and then as I work my way back up to the top of the leaf again you can see very clearly now that it's green on this left hand side near the tip of the leaf and it's going to be much more brown on the bottom half and in the middle a bit more yellow so you can see me doing a bit of correction there as I go in with a dry brush that sucks up the, the color that's already on the paper and you know takes it back a notch to a sort of slightly paler yellow kind of color. I'm also just defining a little bit of some of the veins, not too much detail at this stage. And I take this opportunity to also define some of the shadow. The leaf is lying on a surface and it's casting a really cool shadow that's very strong in some places, but very gauzy and diffuse in others. So that's what I can use water to do here. You see me add water to an edge that could dry quite as a sort of hard edge, but the water just softens it up and allows that color to flood outwards. And here you can see me dropping in some darker blobs of color and letting them run in the wet paper so that they become a lot more fuzzy and a bit more diffuse. As we get down towards the bottom of the leaf here, the shadow is a lot stronger, it's a lot darker, but even though I'm going in fairly dark with the sepia, I don't want to go in too dark too soon here. So, you know, this is like a sort of a mid-tone, allowing me to do a darker tone if I need to later on. So my third layer is all about getting bolder and braver with my colors and my shadows. And you can see me putting on um, paint that is darker here. Now I know it looks still very, very fluid and very, very wet, but my ratio here is probably 50-50 in terms of pigment and water. Whereas the earlier washes you saw me putting on were much you know, heavier water, not so much pigment, so it was a lot paler. So now I am getting a bit darker, but I'm trying to keep it quite fluid as well so that the, the surface is quite wet and I can keep adding these colors and just gently sort of teasing them around moving them around a little bit so that they flood together and the darker colors that you can see me using towards this right hand side of the leaf and for the shadows is a combination of the burnt sienna the sap green and the seaweed green together all three of them sort of mixed together and combined in a palette to give me the darker browns that I need and I've got each of the colors put into a little palette and they're all separate and I've got like that well in the middle so I can like take a little bit of each one slap it into the middle part of the palette and mix together there and get the darker greens and the darker browns as you can see me using here um, in order to try and give this leaf a bit more definition and start to give it more depth. So here I am going for the shadows, but I'm still erring on the side of caution, which is why I'm not going in with super dark colors straight away. But the way that this leaf is curled, because it's an autumn leaf, 
Um, it's very, very dark on this left-hand side where it's more green, and it's also very dark on the right-hand side where it's more brown, and through the middle is the area which is closest to the table, which is the most flat, if you will. So it's got a lot more yellow and a lot more orangey browns here, and that's what you can see me trying to do in this center bit. Putting in these patches of brown because the leaves on the turn, but also using the, the very fine tip of this size six round brush to try and add some little definition, little shadowy bits to show the edges of veins um, in the leaf and if I overdo it a little bit as you see me do with this bit I just get the brush I dry it I clean it and then I just come back in and I almost just sort of soak up the bits of color that I think are in the wrong place that I kind of almost want to erase and here you can see me putting in some little patches some blemishes on the leaf and I just start with a dark bit of color and then just successively wash my brush dry my brush and just gently go around and around and around till I soften up the edges and it's not so quite so hard quite so tough and here you can see me using some of that dark brown that I uh, mixed up earlier and I'm using that to do shadows on the leaves as the leaves curl down the edges of the leaves curl towards the table they're darker and they're in a more shadowed kind of place and you can see me use that dark brown and only going so far I'm leaving those little light trails through the very very center which is to be the veins that go from the spine of the leaf out towards the very edge So my second pass at the shadows is a sort of tale of two halves, putting on some really, really thick paint and then getting water on the brush and going along the edges of the thick, dark paint to make it more diffuse. But then in other areas where it's very wet already, dropping in lots of that nice dark shadow so that it can flow outwards really smooth and really fuzzy. So here we are already with the final layer and it's all about dark greens and dark browns and detail. You can see me now start to put in the uh, veins of the leaf with far more uh, sort of like clarity and definition. I'm still using the size six brush, but it's a round, so it's got a really nice fine tip on the end and I'm not feeling the need to sort of go and get a really, really super fine brush from somewhere else. I can do it all with this one. And also not using a teeny, teeny thin brush makes me perhaps a little less noodly with this and a little less obsessed with some of the details. I still need some of that nice dark brown on this right hand side of the leaf where it really, really has started to dry out and autumn has taken its toll. But it is all about detail at this stage and you can see me defining the edges of the veins on this leaf and the shapes of, of how each sort of segment and part of the leaf is defined by these very, very small and very, very fine shadows. As it is with most watercolor at this stage is all about you know balance you look at it does it need to be darker yes okay get some more of that color mixed pop a little bit more on let it dry and then go back in uh, you know a couple of these bits I was a bit impatient I tried to work over a bit that was a little bit damp and um, you then risk reactivating the paint that's underneath blending the two together and it ends up not being as dark as you hoping it was going to be so you've got to be patient and just keep looking like I said about the balance you know how much extra paint do I have to you know add on here to make it as dark uh, and give it the definition and the shadow that it really should have to look three-dimensional and it's good to have all your colors still in your palette because even though primarily I'm looking at the green areas here I then see that there's some patches of brown that I've neglected to put in on the leaf but because I got the colors right there in the palette I can just wet those and start popping those in I'm doing some extra little bits of shadow on those blemished areas that I probably softened a bit too much up earlier so it's definitely nearing its completion but I just can't stop myself from working into these green areas on this sort of far left part of the leaf a little bit more, just trying to add a little bit more dark just to really make some of those veins pop out because of course they're within quite a shadowed area. So I need to make the veins a little bit darker still so that they can stand out against the back colors. So there they are side by side with a few color differences. I think I was more worried about the very rigid kind of texture, the very linear texture of the paper here. But actually the way that the Arteza watercolors, which are a bit more sedimenty, have sort of settled in those troughs uh, has actually given it quite a pleasing look. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And you can follow me on all of those social media with the handle GMASAMART. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.